Okay, hello students, children, everybody, designers. Um, uh, my name is Bea Senfeld and I'm a workaholic. And uh, you may laugh now. Yes. Okay, this is going to be tough, tough audience. Yes. Okay, off with the shoes, off with the shoes. So, um, this is my label uh, and I work, as Connie said, with fashion. I had, uh, um, yes, oh, this clock, my God, where is the, it's, it's all a mess. Where is my, it's here, okay. I'm in fashion and I'm blonde, so I, I can be like this and people will laugh. Okay, no, point at this, point. Okay, so uh, this is my label. And yes, we have now 70 minutes, so uh, I will start from the beginning. This is me uh, in Poland. Uh, this is um, late 70s. Uh, um, this meets me and my dog. My granny was a tailor uh, and she worked at a factory. Actually, during the Second World War, she was taken by the, uh, by the how do you say it, uh, by the bad people, yes. Uh, and she was making uh, suits for the German arm army, for the, for the uh, German army, anyhow. So, uh, this, uh, so she worked at a, um, she was tailoring stuff in, in a manufacturing uh, company and um, I never went to kindergarten. Uh, I always hang out with her and her uh, lady friends at the factory. And uh, when I was six years old, I already knew how to uh, manage a sewing machine and how to roll cigarettes because that's what the lady taught me in the factory. So it was really, uh, it came really natural later on when I decided to, uh, when I grew up, uh, that I wanted to work with clothes. And, uh, and, and, yes, fashion. Fashion is lovely, because uh, fashion is, um, actually when we designers design something, we design it for girls that uh, are not more than maybe 15 years old. They eat one banana a day, and uh, they have, um, they have uh, a bunch of people uh, like uh, hairdressers and, uh, and uh, makeup artists all around them and make them look good and cool. And this is the same thing about the trends, that the trends that we fashion people create, it's just for fun. It's, not that it's nothing you have to use during your day. Yes, you understand. So that's why I, when I worked with fashion, I had, my, I had uh, like a... Um, commercial, like ready to go collection for five years, for 10 seasons I struggled to, to, to manufacture those clothes and to work commercial with clothes is really, really boring because you have to do like tops made out of silk that you are able to wash in a washing machine like on 90 degrees. Yes, that someone is really washing their clothes, you else, you're so happy that someone else is washing your silk shirts, no? Because you cannot wash silk in washing machines. No response at all. No one knows what silk is and no one knows how to wash it. Anyhow, and it's supposed to be really cheap, not cost more than like three, 30 euro and it's no more than eight buttons. It's supposed to be really cheap and everybody's supposed to love it. And it was no challenge at all for me to, to, uh, to, to do this ready to wear collections. I, I used to think like, my God, like a bunch of baboons can sell uh, t-shirts for like three, three or thir three euros, but to sell something that is really designed, that's really uh, handmade uh, was, uh, was more than a challenge. So when, so when I was doing this ready-to-wear collections, I, I um, started to think about fashion. And I, for me, fashion is almost very much like uh, this branding uh, hysteria that people buy clothes, really expensive clothes, but they don't know what, what, why are they buying it. Mostly we buy it because of the brand, and I think we should buy clothes because it's fun, or because we like the design, or we appreciate the design. So during, w when I was doing those ready-to-wear collections, I made small, small collections, of, um, uh, like really secretly, nobody knew it. Uh, and uh, this is a collection I made because I was sick one week and I watched all the Esther Williams movies. You know Esther Williams, she's like a famous, you young people don't know, but she was alive long, long, long time ago during the 50s. And um, she was uh, a, uh, uh, what do you call it? She was a, uh, uh, now it's, uh, 
Const uh, she was a swimmer. She was like swimming. Synchronized. Yeah, she was swimming synchronized. Yeah. Anyhow, in the 50s, she was, she was big. So, uh, and, and she looked really nice under the water and stuff like that. So I, I, I thought, like, yes, let, I want to make bathing suits that makes women look beautiful and they, they were really, and more, more, more like clothes you can wear in everyday life. The thing was with this swimming suit, I bought really cheap material, which is like ly lycra, that I cut in small strips, uh, strips and, and then I, when you pull it, then, uh, the the fabric became f like fringes. So the thing with the bathing suits was that the the fringes were really really heavy. So on this one, I think we have maybe 10 or 15 meters of lycra. So when you jump in the water, it, it becomes really heavy. So <laughs> you sank. But <laughs> never mind. So yes. Yes, <laughs> it was really funny. So yes, really lovely, lovely, and everybody loved it. All the magazines, all the stylists, everybody really loved the pictures, and and, and the and the, the bathing suits. And uh, uh, the phone rang, and it was my my selling agent Thomas, and he said, "Oh, lovely bathing suits, suits, except for no one can use them. I have one other question: is like there's two bathing suits that that are attached to each other, and it's like Thomas, we're going to be rich. I invented bathing suits for twins." He hung up, and we never talked to each other again, and he never sell any of these bathing suits, and I think it's all his fault because I think. There is, I mean, there's lots of twins around the world. I'm sure they really want a twin suit. Anyhow, oh, yes, semester builder, as we said in Swedish, vacation f pictures. No, it's as an assistant, you have to do lots of stuff in my atelier. Uh, and if you're a guy, you have to do more than everyone else. So this picture, what I have it on my desk, it's for lots of reasons. One of them is because I'm a fashion designer and I work with, with clothes, people uh, often they, they want me to do clothes out of fabric, and I really don't want to do that. I want to do clothes of other materials because I believe then, only then, I can make people to stop and look at clothes uh, and look at the design and, and, and stuff like that. Yes, uh, last week I was uh, having this same thing and showing this picture for uh, a bunch of really cool ladies and they were in like older and they all pick up their iPhones and took pictures but no one here took a picture one guy yes lovely anyhow so this is uh, this is uh, this is this is one of my latest paper collection it's called Sula Plage it's in French of course uh, and it and it says um, on the on the beach, and uh, these are the famous bathing suits in paper, because that's what I do. I do something economically um, challenging, that bathing suits in paper. Uh, the, uh, the whole collection is done if, with one sort of paper, it co it's called the Chromolux, it's a um, cardboard with a, with a um, with the with the surface that looks like uh, metal, but it's not, it's all paper, and all the paper I work with, um, it's for me. It's really, uh, it's really um, necessary that the material I work with are really easy. You can get them all everywhere, and you can cut them with a knife or with the scissors. I don't. Everything we do, we do in our studio. We never leave every, anything to, to 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 someone else. So we do everything by hand. I will show you this, and this is the jacket that that took the longest time to do, four months. Uh, I I never thought we will ever be ready. <gasps> Eight minutes. Okay, I speak faster. So the four months, it's like a three-dimensional paper sequence that we put together, glued together. We cut them ourselves, and you know, yes, so four months. And here is Björk, as Karin said. Uh, it's really nice when you have a person that you have been inspiring you for such a long time. I love Björk even since she was. Uh, with sugar cubes, and it's so nice to finally get give back something to someone that's been such a great inspiration for me. And um, uh, this is more pictures from the collection, and uh, I often work with, um, when I have uh, a technique, I do it smaller, I do it bigger, I do it in different kind of papers. And still, what I like about this Chromolux paper, that it looks really rough and really... 
uh, really hard, but it's really fragile. It's just it's just paper. And here's Björk again on the cover of the another magazine. Lovely. When I work with um, uh, with uh, with my collection, it's not. The, of course, a lot of time goes to 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 do the the garments, and but I think also the it's really important to to work um, also on the invitation, to work on the presentation of the collection. So for the Sula Plage collection, I thought uh, the invitation should look like this. It's a box, it's just an IKEA box, nothing fancy. I painted it and make it look real vintage. It says Sula Plage. My idea was when people will get this invitation, they will come to my exhibition, perhaps, or not. Okay, so here comes the box, and out comes the sea, the sand, and everybody will be like, ooh, be a for she's a cool girl. We have to see, go and see her collection. Yes, I went to the post office and asked how much it would cost to post this kind of boxes to 800 people, and uh, that was really challenging for me too because I, it was really expensive. Anyhow, so I went home. People often ask me, Bea, where do you get your inspiration? My inspiration, I get inspiration from, from being alone, being left alone, eating lots of sugar and drinking hot tea. So I was drinking hot tea, eating lots of chocolate and was thinking, okay, I have a box, I have an exhibition, I need to do invitations. But okay, the box is too, uh, too expensive. Okay, so what can I do? If the box is too expensive, what can we afford? Oh, where's the thing? Yes, what can we afford? And uh, what we could afford was sur la plage. This is the thickest thing you can send with Swedish postal uh, service. It's funny they call it service because, yes, anyhow. So the postal thing, yes, it's the sea, it's the sand, it's the invitation, please come. Sorry, we're desperate. <laughs> so this is what we could afford. Yes, really funny to be working in fashion business. Sur la plage, yes. Um, so, uh, uh, in, in my, uh, when I work, uh, you know, people always say, Bea, you have to think outside the box, especially when you have your own company, you're blonde, there's lots of men that came, no offense, but they came always and say, come always and say, Bea, you have to think outside the box, you have to hire people, you have to grow your company, you have to be, get bigger, and I was like, no, I don't have to. I want to be left alone. I don't want to hire anyone. I did it once. I hired one person. And she, she worked like from Monday to Friday. And she wanted to go home like four or five o'clock. So it was not possible because we work seven days a week and we go home when we're ready. And if we're not ready, we have to stay all night and work. Anyhow, remember Bjork? The, the jacket, four months, it took four months. So for me, thinking inside the box, it's really important. Uh, I don't like people pushing me into corners. I don't like people pushing me to do whatever else, what everyone else is doing. And also I think you don't have to go to Japan or London or New York to get inspiration. I think, the all, I think you can find lots of inspiration really near you. You know, when you're in a room and everybody's screaming, because that's what's happening today. Everybody's on Instagram and everybody's on, on Facebook. Everybody's like, there's so much things going on on and I think in, in, in a world like this it's really nice to just take a step back and just be quiet and just listen just close the door eat a lot of sugar drink tea and just do st stuff by hand um, to um, I am a uh, uh, I am a Christmas fetishist can you say that with that that sounding really weird. Yes, I love Christmas. Yes, I love when people cry, then we eat, and then we buy presents we don't want to buy, and we get presents we don't want to buy. It's, I really love Christmas, really, really love Christmas. And so each, each year, I, um, I, I try to do uh, by hand, of course, uh, really funny, as I think at least, uh, a Christmas card to all my customers, to different, uh, to people that inspires me, to uh, uh, the Swedish king, Håkan Hellström, you know, people really important in your life. Um, and uh, so, uh, so I start at, at Easter, I start to think and worry about Christmas. What, ca what, what kind of Christmas card should I do? And um, I was thinking one year, what, what, did, what did people do last Christmas? What did everybody did? Everybody did, they produced a new Christmas uh, CD. Or, 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 or record. So that's, I thought, yes, that's what I'm going to do. So basically what I did, I went to um, 
like a, a uh, vintage shop and bought a lot of, of these. You old people, you know what it is. You young people, this is music, or at least this was music before. Uh, vinyl records, yes. Uh, so, no, I didn't sing any song. I, I, I just bought lots of old vintage records and we made ourselves, we printed all this stuff out and we made our own uh, record. And the cover is a, uh, a poodle that has b is, is going to be eaten up by a chihuahua, of course. And this song is called It Ain't Christmas Until Somebody Cries. That's what my mom always says. And... Um, uh, and of course, I don't do this myself because uh, we, we sent about uh, 800 of these Christmas cards. I have lots of friends, uh, not my customers, not the people I want to work with. Ooh, anyhow, so and um, so yes, so this is how it looks when we. It's really in the. In, is, this is Daniel, my my uh, my partner in crime. When I call him and said, like, Daniel, let's make 800 handmade v vinyl records. He's like, yes, let's do it. I'll be there. So be like Charlie Chaplin, you know, the modern times with the, uh, the whole atelier is like a um, big factory. So this is how it looks. Chop chop. And I just want to read. Uh, uh, there's a thing. Uh, there's a thing, I mean, my English is like really, really not good, but I will read it anyway. So, the thing says, uh, don't be surprised if a big, fat red man comes down your chimney and puts you in a black sack. I told Santa I want you for Christmas. Merry Christmas, your royal highness, love beer. Yes. Okay, so, um, now we have... Uh, so this is it. Oh my God, I was speeding up so much. So we have one minute and 20 uh, seconds left. Um, let's, let's be silent, no? It wouldn't be nice. The TED talkers, they just keep talking and talking. Oh, this is nice. Yes, this is really nice. Okay, so thank you so much for listening. And... Um, Hopefully, I see you again soon. Thank you so much.